Okay, so go ahead, bro. Well, I appreciate it, brother. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Um, I am Instructor Aku. Uh, many of you know who I am, some of you do not. I proudly represent 36th Chamber University of Martial Arts and Sciences. I am one of five instructors. Uh, I am today starting a four week series on the physical formula for power. Uh, this is coming on the heels of some four months that were led by instructor Keith, instructor North Leg, uh, and he did a stellar job. So it's a tough, tough act to follow uh, his lead on it. Um, with that being said, I want to thank everybody who's made the time to uh, join us this, this evening. Uh, we appreciate you. We have a, a full house of 28 participants, so it's awesome to have you. That being said, I also want to bring awareness to the fact this is a family home. Uh, we just extracted my father from the South, military mission style, and he is here with me as well as my baby boy eight-year-old rambunctious young man, and our newest family member, our five-week-old puppy, her name is Dana. So that being said, anything live would have happened over here. You could hear some pots clanking. You could hear this little puppy go crazy. Just bear with me and uh, understand it's all love. Okay. With that being said, um, we always work to emphasize the importance of both physical application and metaphysical application. Uh oh, is there, okay, my man, thank you, Mr. Instructor, for letting me record. As well as physical application, as well as metaphysical application of the principles that we live by in the discipline physical as well as metaphysical. So we often say that, you know, the generous discipline, formerly known as Kempo, Nadamu Yajuwa, is ever evolving. And it is principle-based teaching and disciplines that apply on and off of the physical dojo floor. So we often say it's far more than kicking and punching and that our intention is to create or help the growth, facilitate the growth of black belts in life. And so in the early days of our discipline, it is said that there were a number of individuals that were formidable opponents with their hands, fists, knees, feet, et cetera, elbows and the like, but they were getting beat up in life. And so it became a very important uh, emphasis for what we call warriors of knowledge, W-O-K or WOKs, warriors of knowledge to be developed. And that is our goal, that we operate as black belts in life. Those that are able to not only defend themselves, but to create the lives and the uh, manifestations around us that we intend and desire. So, with that being said, um, we're gonna deal initially, again, with the physical side of things. So the physical formula for power is pinned on four core tenets. Those core tenets are one, point of balance, two, directional flow, three, mechanical conditioning, and number four, point of contact. Again, those four tenets, core tenets, some of us, this is review, some of this is brand new. Again, number one, point of balance. Number, number two, being directional flow. Number three, being mechanical conditioning. And four, being point of contact. With that being said, I want to um, do two things. First, Instructor Keith, can you tell me how to mute Telegram? Telegram is making that noise in the back. And, uh-oh, I might have figured out why the camera didn't work, y'all. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But I need to stop that noise because I my, my brothers and sisters are not going to stop texting and chatting. Hold on. Yep, so you just go to uh, Telegram? 
Uh-huh. And then at the top is three three uh, horizontal lines. Mm-hmm. And then you go to uh, settings. And then notifications and sounds. And then you just turn the notifications off. Three lines, settings, notifications. Uh, desktop. Show sender message, play sound, no sound. Include muted chats, count on read messages. Okay, I think that did it. Thank you, sir, as usual. Now, I might no have, have figured out why we didn't have uh, a video. Hold on one second. Um, what happens here? Am I live on camera? You are live. There I go. Okay. All right. Here I go. Okay. All right. Now, now, now I can't get nervous. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, what I want to play for you is a video. This was recorded uh, back in the summer. So, again, some of you are family, already family. Some of you are new family. We just concluded um, some 27, 28 weeks of a virtual uh, class. COVID necessitated the evolution of the discipline, obviously to go virtual like every other business that intends to make it. Uh, So we made that, we were blessed to make that uh, transition, that evolution. And from that, we have new family and friends. Uh, I say that to say, the video that I'm going to play is only three and a half, four minutes long, but it was recorded in conjunction with the this the principle, the teaching of these principles, the physical formula for power to our new students that came to us through the virtual space. So now I want to do a screen share. Uh, host disabled participators. Host, can you uh, can you position me? Yep, I got you. Without without him, the whole ship would not work. If you want, I can just share the video from my uh, thing. Okay, brother. If that's easiest, by all means. Give me two seconds. Yes, sir. I got a question while you're doing that, Instructor Aku. Yes, sir. I remember when we were in one of our um, physical space classes that you all switched number two and three. Um, mechanical conditioning was mechanical conditioning was two and directional flow is three. Is that still setting or y'all sticking with what we said right now? I'm going to stick with what I just said right now. Are you referring to last week's Saturday class? Um, it might have been. I'm not. I'm not remembering when exactly, but um, it was the class we talked about the equation and um, all the instructors. It was a Saturday. I think it was a Saturday after the test. Yes. Okay. If it was last Saturday, do you have your notes to independently verify that that's fact? We switched those two around. Yeah, I do. It's in my phone. That okay. You, I switch. Y'all, y'all, all the instructors agreed that okay. two should switch out. Okay. Fine. So next week we'll deal with mechanical conditioning. Feel free to edit your notes. Everyone is taking notes and move mechanical conditioning to number two on that list. Point point of balance, mechanical conditioning, directional flow and point of contact. And that'll be the order that we will deal with it in. How you coming instructor Northland? I don't know if you saw that, but it, it wouldn't play. It was just spinning. Let me uh, attempt to do it again. Okay. It's one of those days. It was so interesting preparing for today. When I tell you my point of balance has been tested today, didn't even go out to, didn't go out the house until just a couple hours ago. And I was tested at my dining room table, maintaining my point of balance all day long. I don't know if it's retrograde or not, uh, brother, brother Paul. Okay. 
can you can you give me the permission to share my screen instructor Let's see if i can make it work yeah that's what i'm going to do what i'm on what i'm gonna do is uh i'm gonna give you back the the right to um be the administrator okay and then uh you can do it For all our newcomers, I do apologize for something less than uh, perfection, but we will get through it. In the meantime, are there any new people that are willing to uh, identify themselves and let us know how you come to be in our presence this evening? Anybody new to the call? Maybe not even new to us. Um, I'm new to both. Yeah. And, uh, my man. Peace, uh, brother. Introduce yourself. Mom, mute. No, you, no. You, you, we can hear you well. All right, all right. <clears throat> my name is Marquise Bradley. Um, I'm new to the dojo. I, I started a month now. It's my first time on a call as well. Um, I found out about the dojo um it was crazy two years ago in the summertime i met a guy working out at the park and he recommended the dojo and then two years later i come across a female uh, that i've been knowing and she told me like uh somebody introduced her to this dojo so i was like well i heard of this place from somewhere and i looked in my wallet seen a card and it was the same place so i was like you know what this is God telling me I'm supposed to be there. So I went, I reached out to um, Instructor Keith. He told me to come. I stuck to my word and been dedicated ever since. Excellent. Thank you for the testimony. We're happy to have you, Brother Marquise. You Thank are you. Uh, you are you are rapidly becoming deeper and deeper into the clan, man, and and growing, growing fast. We talked about that last night. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Looks like I am now the host. Let me see if I can activate screen share. Okay. Share. I don't want to go here. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do this. Instructor, you gotta play, uh, connect your, the audio to the computer. Uh oh. So you can't hear it, Will? Not at all. Oh, shucks, man. Let's see here. Okay. Connect my audio to the computer. And you gotta present from your, um, present from your computer's audio when you're, when you're presenting. It should be a little tab. Uh, I, I certainly apologize again. I, this is not my area of expertise. Let's see here. So it's a Zoom. It's a Zoom. Share computer um, sound. Share computer sound. Let's see. There you go. Let's do it again. Family, this is Instructor Working Aku. Out. Uh, I want to take you through point of balance, which is one of the four physical, one of the four components of the physical formula for power, point of balance. Point of balance is control over your center. The way the human body is made, the head is directly over the center of the body. So what I want you to do is imagine a uh, steel rod that runs through the top of your head, directly through the center of your body and into the ground. 
between your feet. And ideally, in fact, over your heels. If you notice, the body is made so that the body it sits over the heels. So point of balance can be summarized as control over your center, whether that's in the air, on, your, on both feet, or on the ground, or on one foot. So when, you, when you're dealing with the point of balance, again, imagine this rod that's running through your body, whether you're on both feet here, or you're on one foot. That same rod is running through the center of the body, into the heel, and has you over yourself. Not forward, you're leaning forward, not backwards, you'll fall backwards. You want to stay center and over the self. That's point of balance. Again, whether it's one foot, the other foot, both feet in the air or on the ground, you want to deal in the center. The reason that's important for combat is if you attempt to deliver a blow and you miss that target, you do not make contact and you come forward. That foot is swept, you come forward, you have no base, you have no power, you lean backwards. You cannot deliver power from the, and fall backwards at the same time. You want to be in control of your center, for your feet, application. Additionally, you need to have point of balance. You have control of placement of the foot. Does you no know, good, good to, to deliver a kick and fall forward, you fall into a weapon, into a blow. Does you no know, good to deliver a kick and go backwards. You lose the power, no penetration. So I hope that gives you something to chew on and to consider. Practice at home, again, from a set position. Just find center, find center. Be center. Be center. Feel power. Feel it. Feel poise. Feel your position. And that's on one foot. Be way. Back. Side. Again, another component to the point of balance. This foot has to move. This is not a static application ever. You always have to move. The body is made to adjust. So when I come up on one foot, in order to find balance, that foot takes an angle. But that does not eliminate the heel from still being in the same position. And that foot may take an angle to deliver that kick, to deliver that kick, Deliver that kick, to deliver that blow, here, around, whatever. Point of balance, even there, here. 85 to 90% of the weight is on that supporting foot, so that this foot can be moved, can be placed wherever I need it to be. Take control of itself. So I hope that gives you something to, to chew on. Again, this is only one component of the four P's in the formula, physical formula for power. This is Point of Balance. I hope you got something from it, and we'll see you on the floor. Okay. Um, any questions, comments on that? Okay. All right. Made perfect sense to everybody there. Oh, we could want to say it. Okay. Instructor, I had a question uh, for for those new students. Um, is it would you be able to um, express what the weight distribution is in percentages uh, for those who are new to the call? Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Short answer is yes. Uh, so when it comes to weight percentages or distribution. The, the supporting leg, which was illustrated as being below the, the, the center of the body, is going to maintain 85 to 90 percent of your total body weight, which allows us to effortlessly utilize the front leg as a, as a weapon uh, without changing our position, without increasing our height, without having to take a step in order to use that in specific, that lead leg uh, as a weapon. Thank you for the question. That being said, the emphasis was, was placed on control over your center. 
So when we look at the anatomy of the body, obviously we are made in an upright fashion. The spinal cord is that which supports the, the organ base, right? So, you know, we've seen people, all I've seen people that have lost a leg from the knee down, from the thigh down. You've seen people that actually, you know, seem to sit on where uh, the genitalia would exist. So we understand that the, the most important or life preserving aspects of the human body are all captured essentially from the waist up, the stomach, the heart, the kidneys, the lungs. And as we elevate up the physical body by way of the spinal cord, we get into the more, most refined uh, aspects of the anatomy, the, the eyes, the, the mouth, the vocal cords, and obviously the supercomputer we call the brain. So I say that as a basis for understanding that the, the, the genius that created us, created us in such a way that we operate in the upright fashion. So having control over your center is central to power. And as was uh, alluded to, ideally, in most instances, we're operating with both feet on the ground, which provides you know, the most st stable of bases. And so from there, we obviously will be able to, in most instances, be, as be at our most powerful with both feet on the ground. But again, and staying confined to the physical aspect from a combat application space, um, having both feet on the ground allows for the most powerful base for upper body being the hands, elbows, et cetera. And then obviously in order to use a foot, you have to lift the foot. And so at that point in time, you're dealing with, again, one foot on the ground, whether that's in a, stri a straight application or a round application, in front of you, behind you, or to the side, high or low. That being said, when we have a true sense of awareness as to how to generate power from the center of your being, you are still able to be powerful and effective whether you have no feet on the ground, whether you take to the air and deliver a weapon with the, with the foot or with the hand, or whether you find yourself flat on your back on the ground, when you have a connection to the core of self from the gut, from the dantian, and are connected to the ability or the power of that, that we find in, in synchronizing, you are able to be effective in any place. Does that make sense? Are there any questions or anything that uh, we'd like to care to discuss, you know, have a brief conversation around in that aspect? Does anybody not believe that? Does that not, does that not sound possible? Does it sound, does your mind say, how can you be powerful without your feet on the ground? Or how can you be powerful in the air or, or on your back? Did anybody brain say that? Ask that question. I got a question. It's not surrounded surrounding that. Um, my brain doesn't question that. Okay. Um, but could you first spell Dantian and second for the new people? Can you unpack that a little more? What the Dantian is? Absolutely. Great question. So, in my mind, instructor, correct me if I'm wrong. D A N. First word, second word, T N T E, excuse me, T I E N. Don T N is, is the way I spell it in my notes. That's correct. Okay. And so the, the Don T N is that area below the belly button and essentially at the pubic line. And so, um, When we overlay that on, you know, the chakra, uh, the chakra energy centers, you would you would align it mostly with the sacral chakra. And so, our practice, a part of our practice, core to our practice, is the breath, you know, and connection to the breath. And an instructor took us through a, a beautiful walk on the power of the breath. So as not to repeat that. Uh, those of you uh, interested, by all means, go to our YouTube channel and you can 
you can search that out. But core to our discipline is the breath. And so a number of exercises that we incorporate, but the baseline is to inhale through the nose and breathe like you did when you first arrived to planet Earth as a child. Breathe like you would bear witness to uh, mammals in the animal kingdom. Breathe like you would as athletes are taught and singers, world-class singers and, and, and opera performers are taught. Breathe like you did when you took your first womb out your mother's belly. Just took your, excuse me, took your first breath out your mother's womb. It's in through the nose, filling the belly button, filling the, filling the belly up. Over time, we start to breathe in our chest cavity behind our ribs. When you look at the, the, the lung and the way it's made, it actually becomes more expansive at the bottom. And that is in line with the opening in the rib cage. And so when we breathe according to uh, connecting to our source, to our spirit, and with the intent of creating power, becoming connected with power, we breathe in the nose, we take that that beautiful product, that air, that oxygen, that key, that life force, we take it in and we, we press it down. And you're pressing it down into that space and you grow over time into that space, ideally below the belly button, approximately at the pubic line. And in that area is where we begin to cultivate like a, a cauldron, uh, a connection to power and develop and store chi uh, for delivery at a later date. That is the Don T. N. Sister Kim, did that make sense? Uh, and is there any any questions from anybody else related to that? That makes sense, Instructor. Thank you. You're welcome. You you said uh, you store it. You store it in the chi. Well, chi um, is the is the life force. Chi prana, uh, you know, life force. A number of Yes, it is, a, it is a part of the chi belt. That is correct. So um, is that kind of like what we would do when we get ready to get that uh, punch in the stomach? Absolutely. Kick in the stomach? Absolutely. The key, uh, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. And as you cultivate a relationship with it, you realize that that energy force actually expands beyond that region. It becomes integral and a, a key component, a part of the, the bubble of power that we begin to operate in. And as we truly get connected and expand, we should be able to develop an orb about ourselves that's 55 feet in diameter. And so at the very beginning of this, when we first began to get acquainted with that and breathing in and out behind the belly button. And one other thing that's important, um, in, in engaging that area, in cultivating the relationship in that area, it is as important to on the exhalation, out the mouth again, in the nose, taking that energy down, filling the belly, compressing it. Two things are important here, one, in order to begin to pack that energy, especially in the beginning, we need to be able to engage the per perineum or the sphincter muscle so that you're not allowing that energy to begin to escape through the anus, which happens. So as you take that energy in, you wanna lock that off and do your pressing in the, into the Dante in is critical in storing and cultivating and beginning to align yourself with that energy source and the power that, that lays therein. So that's one thing that was important. The second piece in the cycle of breath in and out, the same and opposite way, excuse me, not the same, but the opposite way of inhaling and expanding the belly button, you want to exhale and pull that belly button back as you exhale out your mouth pull the belly button back toward the spine. And that becomes the, a process of conscious work that you can do at any time in the day. When you open your eyes in the morning, while you're driving to and from work, you know, when the, the children are frustrating you, when you're doing your exercise, your cardio, riding your bike, on your row machine, you know, elliptical, yoga, all day long, in the shower, all day, every day. 
all day, every day until it is again back to your first nature. Over time, we lost connection with the first nature of breath and breathing. And as instructor Keith uh, utilized all the time, the substance of meditation is to breathe and be. So for our new students, those that are new in meditation, that you know, uh, you may find yourself in a struggle with controlling your thoughts or your mind is going in all these different places, taking the brain, the supercomputer, taking the supercomputer to the breath is a powerful way to quiet the mind, quiet the brain, in order to quiet the self, in order to find yourself deeper into the meditative space. Again, taking the supercomputer to the breath to consciously monitor this in and out flow in conjunction with the packing and the sphincter holding and all of that is the perfect way to give the brain, the supercomputer, something to do while you, the spirit being, begin to interface on the higher planes in both inwardly and outwardly, as above, as, as below, as within, as without. Did that make sense? Okay. Yes, instructor. Okay. Yes. Can, yes, you, um, can you talk a little bit about like taking that and into movement, like an end, like in your blows, like putting that power into blows? Uh, I'm going to say no, only because we'll deal with that in other points under the formula for, for power. Okay. So great question. We'll save that for directional flow, which, okay. will be, which will now be week three. But what I do want to say, was it another question? Somebody else, uh, before you ask your question, I'm, I'm going to give you space. But before you did, one thing that's on my mind, I want to connect to take us back to uh, how we find ourselves in the physical condition, right? Meaning we are spirit beings having a physical experience. We are spirit beings inside the, the fantastic earth suit, the physical earth suit, one of the you know amazing piece of engineering, evidence of the divinity of the creator. But onboard supercomputer is your brain, right? So this brain is in control before you and I come back to conscious waking thought. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is, the travel from the cosmos into your mother and then the birth process on the other side is constructed such that, instructor North Leg, that's you, instruct, it constructed such that, and it's so traumatic, such that you as the spirit being are lying dormant within the physical earth suit with the gift of the supercomputer called a brain before you come into conscious thought. What do you mean by that? The autonomic uh, nervous system, the autonomic systems within the body. There are so many factors that are at play in your body, i.e. your heart pumping, this magnificent blood throughout your body, uh, this you know, saliva creation, the endocrine system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The synapses firing, the, the spinal cord working. There's so much going on that you and I have no conscious application on is evidence that the earth suit in conjunction with the leadership of the supercomputer is totally operating without your conscious consent. Can we see that? The reason that's important is because as an infant, it's your carnal senses, the five, the touch, taste, smell, hear, and, and sight, it is those five that are, are at play and the supercomputer is constantly tallying information and data, learning words, seeing things, et cetera, et cetera. And that's at play way before you get conscious. And many of us experience that conscious awakening from a spiritual perspective, oftentimes when you find yourself in school, school age, or maybe even at your cousin's house or your friend's house, when you discover that people don't necessarily have the best intentions for you. People can be ugly and nasty to you. 
unfortunately, some of us learn this in our homes, but many of us learn it for the first time outside. And that is the key when the spirit begins to awaken to the different energies, those we will call positive and negative pleasurable experiences versus non-pleasurable experiences. Is, is all of that making sense to your senses? Does that resonate with everyone? Anybody not resonating with that? Makes sense, instructor. Okay, all right. So um, the reason that was important, the reason that was important is because we found ourselves dealing with the breath and we found ourselves dealing with the Dantian and we find ourselves taking more and more conscious control of the actions in your body, the activities of your brain, with the intention of showing up powerfully in the world to create and manifest that vision, that desire, that plan, that dream, that function that the spirit has put in us. And so again, the importance of, we just use martial arts, physical martial arts as a uh, medium of exchange and negotiating um, where we want to operate as spirit beings on planet earth, evidencing our divinity or peace of divinity as gods and goddesses manifesting that which we intend on the planet. So back to point of balance. So uh, interest, one thing that crossed my mind in preparing for the class, so we, we we deal in physical and we can understand physical, solid, but then we put this word or prefix meta in front of it. Does anybody already know what the uh, prefix meta means? Don't hit your Google. If you hit your Google, don't do it. I'm gonna read it to you from Google. Okay, don't worry about it. So anybody fast enough on the draw. So meta, meta means oh. half. You say path? Path. Path, no. Well, path. And away. Who? Away. Away. Away from. Away from a path. Okay, I like it. So let's pause right there. Again, we didn't, we didn't get into the big old dictionaries. I just hit the, the Google piece. But meta denoting change, as in change in position or change in condition, position as in being behind, after, or beyond. And then I use the word elevation as in a higher or second order or of a particular kind. Meta is a prefix denoting change, position, or kind, a kind of thing that is related to a position or condition, placement, before, after, or behind, or higher or second order as in upper echelon. So. I, I like that elevation uh, anchoring point because when we when we move from physical and we talk about metaphysical, we are moving beyond the flesh. So an example of that, I think we can all agree on is how the supercomputer, the brain operates beyond the flesh and that the conscious, the connection to consciousness and how our spirits are beyond the flesh, beyond the physical. So when we deal in the metaphysical space, we are, acknowledging physical, but we are not allowing the physical to be our limitations. Because if we limit it by what we can see or what you think or what you feel or what you can lift, then you are not even scratching the surface at true power. Are we okay with that? Okay. Uh, in addition to that, has anybody ever thought about the suffix I-O-N as in creation, formation, transformation. Has anybody ever thought about that suffix, the I-O-N? Isn't it the process? Process, I like it. Anybody else? It, it makes me think of like positive ions, ions, like See, attractive, ions yes. attracting yes. positivity. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm not, uh, at this time, versed well enough to go down that scientific path, but ion is absolutely there. But this all correlates to the power of it being true. Brother uh, Infinite, were you gonna say something? 
Okay. Anybody else? It's it's action as well. Action as well. Absolutely. Action, condition, process of, like Theo said, uh, the the attraction, like Teresa said. So it, you know, I in my mind, and the way that the spirit gave it to me, it denotes something that is in or on nature or in motion or in process. It is happening, it's continuing. And when you think about it being continued, most oftentimes it's being generated by us. So us being humankind, us being the, the vicars or the representative of the most high on planet earth, things get done through human action. So independent of the natural setup of climate and et cetera, and again, in this moment, I'm seeing it just like the physical, the physical actions that the body takes place without your conscious consent is the same equivalent in a sense of how nature and the currents and et cetera move without our consent. Although then we show up as God and mess it up. But the, the process of development and building and governance uh, is done by our our conscious action as humans uh, on the planet. So moving it forward. So same like fashion, the spirit is that which exists in the physical, the spirit is that which creates outside of itself in the world around us. So I just wanted to take a second and deal with that metaphysical because for some people, you know, you hear it for the first time or you hear the new and it's like, eh, I wanted to just, dig a little bit deeper into that so that we can put ourselves in it. And that's the most important part is for us to continue to grow and see how we affect the space and affect our life and how we affect the planet. All right. Any questions, comments, or concerns? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was so much tied into the shun related to the, to the metaphysical, um, the elevation so the change in position and and their and 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 kind to change and position and and evolving from one level of existence to the next and is so you're saying the sun part is the action of actually being that process uh or uh the actual process in in and movement of that particular change of position to elevation and so is there are we saying meta okay I'm, I'm, I think I think what I'm doing is I'm getting caught up on the word metaphysical and 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 how they're tying together there because I, I totally understand meta and then the sun part but how are they how are they like what's the word that we're bringing them together with? Okay, so maybe let me let me take ownership for that. I O N um, obviously is not is not physically showing up in metaphysical. So right. let me be clear about that. So for clarity, I just wanted to bring the meta to the physical. I just wanted to bring that prefix or break that prefix out against physical. Okay, so that is the condition that is the denoting change or position or elevation. Hmm. And then the second piece is to uh, identify how we as spirit being are in the physical, but have access to all that is beyond physical. And then I wanted to illustrate how we, as you said, you see that suffix, that I-O-N suffix show up on powerful words like create or form or elevate, you see, and so, in, in pulling that ION out, you just brought up, I think you highlighted an important piece. That I in the beginning of that is you. That I in the beginning of that is what you call me, right? The mental element embodied by the physical characteristic that the world views you as. But when you stand inside of self as I, and we get the awareness that I am and I have, and I was endowed to create, and I create that which I want to see, that I ponder on, that I plan, <laughs> that I work toward, that I fight the discipline to, 
stayed the path of, and I'm talking to myself while I'm talking to you. That was the reason why the ION was, was pulled out. Does that resonate with you, Brother Theo? Okay. Yeah, so there's no direct word in, in relation to the two, but there's a, there's a relationship in just the existence of the two. Correct. I, 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 I totally understand. Copy that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for forcing that to be more clear. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So, um, to that question. So, let's go back and let's look at point of balance. And I want to ask anybody to uh, give an example of where and how you may have found yourself over your point of balance or not in control of center, not in control of self. How do, how do we find ourselves in these positions in life, in the virtual dojo, aside from combat? An example Peace. of being out of your point of balance or over your point of balance. Brother Iria. Peace. Um, I would say perhaps when you are too confident for example, you maybe get too lax um, and I say you, you assume or whatever it is, you just might go into something nonchalant and just not be well equipped or prepared for whatever it is at the task at hand. Um, and I would see that maybe as being over your point of balance. I could be, I could be under your point of balance too. Uh, okay. Uh, I like that. Relaxed, overly relaxed or assume. Those are good examples. Anyone else? I would say instructor, uh, uh, being over your point of balance for me personally is, is um, going, going within um, too much and not, and not dealing with, you can go, I, I find myself going within a lot and I enjoy being there because that's where I create but then I forget that I have family mm. and that I need to find balance and be able to, you know, cause I might go six months at a time without watching TV mm. uh, or uh, doing anything. So, but I gotta realize I gotta find some balance in this house too, in this physical house that I live in with my family mm -hmm. in order to make sure they are taken care of, make sure that um, I'm open and sharing with them and not just being within all the time. So I yep. find myself being over my point of balance by just being within too often. Got you. What, what they say, being, 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 being too heavenly for any earthly good, you know, ain't that the saying? Got you. Yeah. So yes, can you, are you comfortable with the word, overlaying the word withdrawn? Yes, I would, I would take that. Okay. And, that. and would you be comfortable with, as opposed to saying over your point of balance, can we call it being out of control of center? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. The inverse, they, the bottom line, out of balance, out of harmony, one not good, too far either way is, is not being in control of center or over our point of balance. Excellent, excellent example. Agreed. Thank you, thank you, brother, infinite. You're welcome. I got a simple one, you. Huh? I got a simple one that I think most, most of us can relate to. Come on, uh, over committing. Oh, great. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like we all have examples of <clears throat> over committing. You know, we, I, you know, I find myself, you know, working on using I statements to make it more clear. Uh, so I find myself in reflection, um, wanting to do, you know, desiring to, to exert and be self determined. Uh, and get as much done. I might write a list of all the things that need to get done and have no real disregard for like my actual capacity. Because it looks good on paper. <laughs> you need to get done, you know, and um, and then I find myself, you know, maybe doing, doing something or doing many things at 65%. Mm or 70% or maybe even 80%, you know, but there are some things that may not get done to the degree that they need, the attention that they really need. 
and some things may not get done at all. Mm. Right. So that obviously, you know, that show that can show up on the floor and be de deadly, but that can also show up in life and, and lead to a lot of, uh, uh, you know, outcomes that are not favorable as well. Uh, unpleasant mental health, physical health, et cetera, et cetera. So many different applications. So in short, over committing. Man, absolute wonderful example, brother B. Anthony. Thank you. Uh, great word choices too, man. Being beyond capacity, um, over committing. I wrote in my notes, too many yeses. Just give up too, too many yeses. Can you be here, brother? Yes, I can. Can you help me with this, brother? Yes, I can. Daddy, can you do this? Yes. Babe, can you do this? Yes. Homie, can you do this? Yes. Big bro, can you do this? Yes. Little bro, can you do that? Yes. Just too many yeses, like just stretch too thin, like, and beyond capacity. Come on. A quick word on to that. Veggie, to veggie back on. Uh, hold on, Pete. Brother. Hold on, Paul. One second. Let be Anthony. Go ahead, bro. Just a real, real quick word, uh, something that came to me, and I offered it to my uh, my um, my grandma, and she said I should put it on a shirt to use it more. I, I said that uh, sometimes saying no to others is about saying yes to yourself. Excellent. And that's something that uh, I, I, the tool I've been using to support myself and, and uh, stand uh, in my point of balance. That's excellent. Yeah, we do. That's part of the t-shirt line. There's so many. Huh? Because I want to see nobody keep that on church yet, though. No, it can't be. It's on It's on tape. Anybody do it, we, we suing. So it's just don't do it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brother Paul. I was just going to veggie back <clears throat> on what uh, Brother B. Anthony was saying. For me, however, uh, going over my point of balance has less to do with um, with with all people now like i feel like i'm doing a having a better management of um managing everyone um else but self but it's specifically now with family working with my family and my aunt my cousin who i love dearly she's like my sister my aunt is my second mama and uh you know we're in a we're in crunch time at work and they are <laughs> they are not pulling their weight on some very important things we need to get done for our accreditation. And so today in our conference, uh, some extra some of their work got dumped onto me, and neither one of them said nothing about it. <laughs> our consultant dumped the work and was like, Well, Paul, you you know, you're going full steam ahead, so we're gonna give you these sections. And some inside was like, you know, tell them, no, nah, you have other things that you need to, to accomplish. But then the, 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 I guess the humanity in me says, well, you know, this affects lots of people's employment. If we don't have accreditation, we don't have, we don't have, have a business and we don't have a business. It's a lot of people that won't eat. We, we employ a lot of folks who are getting second chances. They've been, you know, they, they don't went to gladiator school and they come home and they need a, need an opportunity to work my logic is we employ them, we keep them from busting folks in their head and robbing them, right? If <laughs> we keep them with some money in their pocket and a job. Um, but the reality is there are things that are suffering that I need to get done for my own personal endeavors, for my nonprofit, uh, for the new business that I started with, you know, two of my brothers that's really rolling right now. And I need to stay very focused. Uh, there's a lot of big things on deck for me personally. Um, and so knowing when to uh, when to adjust and recenter re and, and regain management of my point of balance when it comes to very specific people um, is 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 becoming kind of a, a thing you know I have a tendency to crack open that that uh, that old box and pull out my cape <laughs> and want to save everybody and um, often lured into you know a trap with some kryptonite and so that's kind of that's kind of uh what i need to really be 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 mindful of no pun intended to my brother b anthony <laughs> absolutely but, uh, that's it but but the pun works excellently and it it directly correlates to how we grow on the floor 
And what you just articulated is gaining awareness of the uh, of the areas that need attention. Uh, you have you have grown tremendously in your ability to manage yourself with, like you said, most people. You've done better with managing total strangers, uh, but it's always those that are closest to us that can actually affect us the most. And what you just illustrated. You, you, you perfectly illustrated it. So it's the it's closest to you. It's your auntie and your favorite cousins. You know what I mean? It's, it's that close family. And it's the connection to the other people that are dependent upon uh, this for their livelihood and the business for their livelihood. So most important piece is the awareness because we can all, I would imagine, can find areas where this is playing out. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's a great example. And one word... <laughs> Go ahead. Can I add on? Yes, please. Um, yeah, instructor, uh, this is a, a, a beautiful lesson, man. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, just uh, thinking about how your, you know, how your video sort of demonstrated just that ride going through our center and making sure that we maintain our center. Uh, then uh, instructor Vondre um, put in the chat, uh, could you elaborate a little bit more about how um, how you can find your center even when you are in the air, <laughs> like when you're in the air. Um, and so not that I'm even qualified to even elaborate on that, but um, <laughs> but uh, just it just sort of brings back to how how us being like once we are aware of our God nature and our God selves, um, we do have the power to even though physically it might look like we are off balance, but we can metaphysically command command our center and find find a center, even though physically it looked like there is no center. And so, uh, so what's coming to mind is um, so this Saturday, um, I'm in a event where I'm coordinating the thing, get ready for my students uh, for finals or whatnot, and we're only working for two hours. And so, um, so based on the two hours that we're working, uh, it looks like we only have time to do two tasks. Okay. And, um, and so as I was thinking about the possibilities of what can be done within that two hour um, frame of time, um, I, I just sort of got to just imagining. So I was I wasn't looking at you know, looking at this from a quantified uh, perspective, I was looking at it from just what was possible, you know, and, um, and out of that process, I began to see that even though we have two hours, um, we could, we could actually do a few more things inside that, that time frame, And so uh, it just sort of brings to, uh, to the point that we are what we think we are, and so if we think that we are limited by just being on the ground, then we will be. But we can also, if we allow ourselves to, 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 to be aware of our God self, as you eloquently uh, discussed earlier, we can discover other possibilities that from the physical eye, it looks like it's not possible, but from the metaphysical eye, it becomes possible. Absolutely. That was a fantastic share. Uh, and fantastic illustration. I really can't put anything extra on that. Um, and, and, so, and in conjunction with what instructor Vondre requested, I will center my statement on the physical side of application in that how we find power, how we find power in the air um, is largely tied to your poise. It's largely tied to what we've referred mm. to as synchronization. Um, it's tied in being in the air absolutely pushes physical to the limit. And my instructor, my senior instructor is, is squeezing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shade Dr. Glass. Um, <laughs> But you can be powerful with the hands or the feet in the air. And it's something that actually physically, 
I do often without even giving thought to it. How and why I do that uh, is, is largely tied to instinct. So footnote for half a second, being in the air, in the, in, in the, no, let me stay physical. I need to just stay physical. In the, being in the air physically, we, we, must, we must be in control of something beyond, um, the, the, the power is generated from within inside, inside yourself. So it, with both feet on the floor or one foot on the ground, you're utilizing the earth to support your delivery. You're, you're utilizing the earth to support your, your strike. Without having a true connection to power being generated from within, within the self, Mm. Without being truly connected to power being generated within the self, it is it is extremely difficult to affect to be physically powerful with a strike or with a blow without that support of the earth. Okay, in the metaphysical space and pondering on this, when everything is going really good, when you got all the money in the world, when you have <laughs> all the fame. When nobody tells you no, and you on top of the world, how how fleeting can that uh, how fleeting can that power be, and how um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, not engulfing, intoxicating. How intoxicating that power can be. The 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 illusion of it never ends. The you know the dope dealer that that just won't stop selling dope for twenty years as if it won't stop or uh, you know the entertainer that just stops going into the lab to write their music or practice their craft or the athlete that just doesn't realize that one you one injury away from you know the the, the million dollars a month from not coming again you see mm -hmm. so. When we're in the air, metaphysically, when everything is, you know, copacetic, and even if you if you maintain in harmony there, and God forbid you lose a family member, or go through a divorce, or your health takes an attack. Being in the air, power and delivery has to be. That's another piece about being physical, finding physical power in the air. Thank you, instructor is it has to happen now. When you're in the air, you don't have time. When you're in the air, the, the power has to be delivered right now because everything that goes up must come down. Mm -hmm. Physically, mm -hmm. metaphysically, spiritually, emotionally, etc. Mm -hmm. So does that provide any fabric uh around the concept of physically being powerful in the air metaphysically being powerful in the air you know in the ideal conditions of life did that make any sense to anybody but me well it definitely <laughs> makes sense it definitely makes sense it speaks to for me it speaks to um you know the metaphysical representation of air being thought um and how yeah, you know, I'm an Aquarius. I'm an air sign, and we're always in our in our minds. We're always in our in our heads. Um, in that, it's quite easy to lose a grip on reality and not be grounded. Um, so you know, physically, we're not grounded when we're in the air striking. Uh, let's say it's a jump, snap, kick, or um, or, you know, the, the, the situation, the moment calls for you to leave your, leave, leave the, the ground and strike with a palm heel or hammer fist or whatever the strike calls for. Um, the, the, the presence in the air, the presence in thought on in metaphysics, in the metaphysical sense, the presence that is required, that is mandated of us, um, that focus and that visualization, that intention, those things make us just as powerful when we're striking as if we were rooted to the ground with a with a strong point of balance or a firm, I don't want to say a strong, but a solid and firm, 
established point of balance on, on the ground. Um, so back to the metaphor, we're physically, I mean, we're metaphysically in thought if we're constantly visualizing there must be a power found in that it had at some point it has to come to fruition um but because we're in the moment and present i think it's at that point that power finds us worthy to flow through um you know the physical requirement from what i'm hearing you say to to, to be powerful physically it starts with having a strong point of balance um meaning control that our weight center control of center exactly to have 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 a, a control of some management and of center um and in doing that power takes notice that we have established one of the four requisites for physical power similarly being in the air there's a metaphysical component that that now takes place that now comes into um that's just the flip side of the coin. So, you know, physically you're on the ground. That is that that point of balance is established. But in the air, when you're in the air, you said that there's something that's instinctual that calls to you to strike in that way often. And in doing so, I think it's the presence. I've seen you on the floor and it's that presence and that that um, that presence in the moment as it's unfolding, that power sees you just as worthy to manifest itself through in the air as it does when you're delivering a thrust kick on the floor or delivering a thrust punch on the floor. I've ate several of those from you when you have a, when you have management of your, of your center on the floor. And, and I've, I've eaten several of those blows from you when you, uh, those powerful blows, when you have management of a metaphysical center in the air. So I, to me, it's two sides of, of a coin um, or the same coin is, is, is whether you know, you're, you're, you're grounded or you're aerial, you still can manifest power. Um, and you're just giving, from what I'm hearing, you're giving us two different, um, two different ideations of how power begins to recognize us as being worthy conduits to manifest itself through. Ashe, yes, sir. Thank you. May Sister I Kim, yes, okay. Sister Kimmy, you had your hand up, please. Thank you for your patience. No problem. Um, well, I had my hand up because you you asked about the point of balance outside the dojo. So my my simple one was just being out of control of our emotions and letting others control us. Like if we get into a situation where, you know, we are balanced throughout the day and somebody, you know, may either say something to us or do something to us that we don't find pleasurable and we allow that to take control of our emotions and then that throws us off our point of balance and a lot of time people say oh I'm having a bad day or this is happening it's only because of that one situation or whatever was said or done in that moment is what knocks them off their point of balance when sometimes it can just be as simple as letting it go or as simple as ignoring it or taking whatever was said or done eating it or if you know, eliminating that problem and moving on to where you are back in your own point of balance. But a lot of times we don't do that. We allow others to control us. Um, or, you know, the, my, my favorite saying is don't allow it's someone to knock you off your, Yeah, don't let someone knock you off your square. So um, that's my favorite quote. I mean, I, I think that correlates, you know, knocking you off your squares is knocking you off your point of balance. Just most people don't know the ideology of the point of balance. Um, and what I, I was going to, um, oh, and one quick one too, um, also being at a point of balance, point of balance as far as when we need help. Um, like Chris said, sometimes we go inside ourselves, but a lot of times we can we can uh, scurry away. Uh, for example, like you said, I, I, sh I used to shy away when things get difficult for me. And a lot of times we do that when we're in difficult positions and thinking that 
we need to handle it on our own, but there needs to be a balance of us doing things on our own as well as accepting that help and love from those when we need it. We may not feel like we want it at the time, but that may be exactly what we need. So not to shy away from those people that's there to help us. I mean, the if especially if a lot of times people are calling now, that's the universe telling you like, you can't do this by yourself. You need those with you to hold your hand to get through that. So, and that's establishing that balance, like you accepting their help. And then once their help is complete, then you can figure out everything else that you need to figure out on your own. Um, so those are my two things as far as point of balance outside of the dojo. Um, as far as uh, veggie backing on Paul, which he did a phenomenal job on breaking that down. Um, it reminded me of grabs on the floor because um, a lot of times we work on with the ladies and the women if you are grabbed, they take us off the floor. And at that point, we have no point of balance. We have no center that is grounding us to the ground. So in that moment, we have to find a power. We have to find a groundedness to get us where we need to go. Because, I mean, obviously, if you think about a kidnapping, right, <laughs> they pick them up, they take them off the ground, and they feel that there is nothing else for them to do. They are powerless, but in that moment, there is power and you don't have to be grounded literally to the floor with your feet or boots on the ground in order to find power. It's a mental connection and finding a, you know that point of balance in, in your center, being connected to that center. And so that reminded me of grabs in the dojo um, when we get frustrated, like, what can I do? What do I do? But that's that's our time to get, grounded within ourselves not physically but inside as well as um it reminded me of uh instructor Vaughn because if you think about it he his animal is monkey so he takes himself off the ground majority of the time when he is in combat because he has I feel like he has um found that center between being grounded on the floor physically and not grounded on the floor physically. And so he's able to take himself in between the two, but have power between both. So he's able to jump off the ground and strike if need be and or being grounded on the floor physically if need be to strike. So those two uh, came up for me when you know, you broke those down between you know the physical and metaphysical. So I appreciate that. Thank you, instructor. Thank you. Um way to to bring it to life on the physical side. And when I heard you talking, I got present to core. You find power in your core, which is at the center of self, which we make time and take time to develop that relationship with that deep part of yourself, that Dante in, and with the intention of creating that connection uh, becoming worthy conduits of power, like Paul put it, to the point that that power exudes beyond the physical, at the point where that power transitions from the confines of physical container to outward expression beyond the physical container, because you know you are of the cosmos, and you come from the cosmos, and you are divinely crafted to create and manifest. And we want to get our energy field physically <laughs> tangibly uh, tangibly recognized 55 feet out. And Instructor Ghost brought that to us. We wanna, we, wanna, we wanna build up that energy field so that it's 55 feet beyond you. We call that the Merkaba, M-E-R-K-A-B-A, -A Merkaba. You can put an H in there where you like. Uh, great share, Kimmy. Anybody else? Uh, one thing that came to mind is with the, with the awareness that we time is of the essence, and this is I'm talking to Aku, I'm talking to self, with the awareness that time is of the essence, especially when you're in the air and things are going good or when you take flight or you're not physically on the ground, time is of the essence, power is found in the strike at the right time, in the now time, because you don't have no time. Procrastination is a killer for point of balance. Procrastination disrupts the point of balance or harmony. 
Uh, anybody else with an example? Okay, so I'd like to um, not rush anybody. Come on, Brother Topher. And I can only see one screen at a time, so if I don't see you, please say something. Hey, peace, peace. peace um, I actually have an a example of the alternative. Um, we're talking about um, air signs and when you're up in the air and you're not grounded to the earth, but you're maintaining your internal center of well, your, your internal sensor. Um, for me, I'm not into like the zodiacs and things, but when I got into it, you know, I learned um, I, well, a lot of people when the moon is in Scorpio, there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of chaos going on with people. But for me personally, I was born under the moon in Scorpio. So when and a lot of times when people are in chaos and freaking out, that's when I'm mostly thriving. Like when the pandemic hit, I'm like, oh, perfect. Everything's falling apart. Now I can do what I do best and, and do me. And what I've been, what I'm going through in my life now is maintaining uh, consistency, whereas I'm used to thriving in inconsistencies and, you know, developing discipline and working on developing a, a more grounded sensor as opposed to always depending on uh, my sensor when I'm up in the air. That's, that's my example that I have. Not exactly to, to that, but an uh, example of the alternative. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's a powerful attribute to have, young man, to be calm in the storm and to be at your best when everybody else is freaking out. And being aware of that uh, and being on purpose and being intentional about uh, creating that consistency when you both feet are on the floor or both feet are on the ground is just all a part of that total rounding out of power, being connected to power and your power, regardless of the circumstances. So thank you for sharing that, which I think is a good transition point for, um, I hit it, I hit that, hit that baby too, buddy. Um, uh, but you, uh, transitioning to examples of or metaphysical illustrations of having both feet or one foot on the ground. And in my mind, I, the notes I had is this is being a part of, you know, the everyday struggle. This is uh, being in a position where you're grinding and you're working your plan. And sometimes you got both feet firmly on the ground. Sometimes you little unstable or less stable because you got one foot on, only have one foot on the ground. But in my mind, you know, that's the space where we are metaphysically applying our point of balance when both feet are on the ground. We are healthy, we are employed, we are growing our business, we are rearing our children, we are volunteering our time, we are, you know, supporting our, our seniors, our parents, our grannies. We, we, we're involved in our business partner, you know, business relationships. This is where we are. We, we're studying. We, it's 10 30 at night and we online you know, pressing in. So metaphysically, the point of balance is illustrated uh, with both feet or one foot on the ground in the space that we're in now. Does that make sense? Does that feel applicable? So in contrast, so we talked about the extreme of being up in the air, fleeting, momentary, it could pop at any time, be mindful, stay, stay to your core, you know, stay connected at your core, don't get too high on the hog. And then let's talk about the other dynamic, which is being on the ground, being flat on your back. You know, how do you find power being flat on your back? Any, any inputs on that? Be it physical, let's start with physical inputs, any physical uh, concepts or how to be powerful, seeing the principle applied of having control of your core. Okay, so physically powerful from the ground, uh, again, whether it's striking or grappling. So physically powerful from the ground in our discipline, so long as you have access to your limbs, you have the ability to be powerful. Whether you use your feet to strike from the ground, if somebody has the audacity to step over you, whether you use your feet to disrupt the base of somebody that's approaching you, 
but you use your feet to bring them down to your level, to bring them to the ground as well. Whether you use the hands to strike the knee, to manipulate an ankle, manipulate a knee, to grab the groin, you know, there are all that, that myriad of access to self is still available to you. Knees, elbows, hands, feet, et cetera. We see that really emphasized for those that are present to study or pay attention to jujitsu, which is designed to be powerful on the ground. You know, it is not designed specifically to be powerful on both feet. And even, you know, those practitioners are trained to come off their feet to get on your back, to tackle you to the ground, to get you in a position where most people are vulnerable. So that's physical application of powerful, being powerful in a martial aspect on the ground. Metaphysically, any questions on the physical side? Any specific questions, uh, anything at all? So don't ask me why, but last weekend I was prompted to lay down in front of <laughs> the mark of water and strike it from the ground. Don't ask me why I wasn't even thinking about this at that time, but I was just led to do that. And uh, I enjoyed it. And it's something I will utilize going forward. Uh, yeah, the instructor, me and the instructor Ghost was looking at you like, oh, the instructor going crazy on that boy. <laughs> All them strikes was making, they were hitting as if you were on your feet though. That's what's crazy. Like, the makawar was, it gave the sound as if you were standing on your feet. Mm, Ashe. Ashe. Thank you, brother. Um, again, it's just that space that's, that moved me to do it. And hey, we're going to stick. We're going to stick with it. So in the, thank you, brother. In the, in the metaphysical aspect of it, it alludes to what you said earlier, Paul. In my, in my notes, I think about people that are being reestablished. I think about people that are, you know, down on their look. I think about a returning citizen, you know, leaving gladiator school. I'm thinking about people that are uh, struggling with their finances. I think about people that are struggling in relationships, that lost a, a spouse or uh, going through a divorce. I think about people that are struggling with addictions, you know, alcohol, drugs, gambling, uh, pornography, any number, eating, you know, any number of things. And I think about people that are struggling with depression, you know, that were high in the air, had all the money, all the, everything. And all of a sudden, boom, the helium is out of the balloon for any number of reasons. And now, now we're struggling with depression. You know, the person that worked 30, 30 years at their job and the, the, the pension is snatched away. I mean, any number of things. So, Again, how do we find power? How do you find your point of balance when you when you're down and you and you and you're down? Come on, brother Kinjada. Um, <clears throat> when you uh when you kind of give those uh, those examples, uh, there was a point that you made earlier about um, you know once again I know that this has been stated before, but it just it just connects. It's just um you know, expanding your 55, you know, uh, which is a part of you. Uh, I mean, instructor uh, Northleg talked about uh, last week how the experience and you um, are really one. Like we, we tend to segment ourselves from the experience and not really, not really allow our, our God selves to connect to the uh, to God in in, multi, in just the multi manifestive way that that spirit is manifested, we <laughs> we tend to uh, we tend to stay segmented. And so uh, so when I saw you last week, and that was the first time I seen that, which is interesting. I mean, I've been in a dojo for you know since 2014, and I never seen anybody deal with that Makawawa, uh board in that way. And I was like, and I still felt the same power as if you were, you know, um, as uh, my brother um, Paul said, I mean, it was still, it was still effective. It was still, and that was because you could tell 
that you saw no separation between between what your what your intention was and your position like it, it, you found solitude like on your back and um and it sort of goes back to one of the foundational pieces of our philosophy which says that um you know anytime somebody raises a hand you know we don't we don't choose to be the victim in fact we look at it as an opportunity and so um just personally in my life right now that's just kind of like that's where i'm moving right now like everything that i'm seeing that that in 2020 that that appeared to be a, a problem all of a sudden now i'm kind of seeing an opportunity in it and um and that is such an empowering position to uh to uh to be in you know where you can literally translate whatever challenges you are dealing with as opportunities i mean it is uh, it just flips your whole your whole perspective and and ultimately uh your whole way of living and, and based on how you perceive life uh and and obstacles in your life and so uh to the point where it's not even an obstacle it's like obstacle me we that's what it is it's we it's the god we and, and we're gonna work this thing out you know and so uh so yeah, so it's a beautiful, it's a freedom in that. And that's um, that's something that goes back to what uh, Chief Instructor always says, uh, you know, once you really let go and be the art, you discover a freedom uh, where you can walk the planet and, and, and be all right. And so uh, so that's my, my commentary. Ashe, Ashe brother, and, and, and powerfully Ashe. presented, um, powerfully presented and Anybody else have something? Come on, brother Theo. I had a question though. Um, uh, there was a there was a question posed by Instructor Vaughn earlier about uh, making a connection between <clears throat> the chakra, what chakra system is uh, connected to <clears throat> being in the air, and I don't I don't know if that got that question got answered. But based upon where we at now, I formulated another question um, mm -hmm. that's similar to that one. Uh, where, since you had practice with both, right? You had practice with being in the air as well as being on the ground. Do those, does that power come from the same place? As, as you, as you, as you reflect on that feeling, that sensation, are you channeling that power that from the same place in the body, or is there something is it different? Oh, great question, Theo. Uh, so the short answer, first answer is yes. It all starts in the same place for me. It starts in the core of self. It starts in the center of self. It's rooted in the Dantian. The second piece to that, as it relates to the chakras, the legs and lower extremities are tied to the root and sacral chakra in my mind but the root, which is red uh, energy. The upper body, the arms and hands are tied to the throat, which is blue energy. So some time ago, Instructor Vaughn, as he was preparing myself and Brother Ghost for Black, he and the other instructors were preparing us to earn a Black belt. Uh, he had us go through a series of um, exercises, you know, physical conditioning with bringing the awareness to those limbs, whereas whether it's upper body or lower body limbs, activating the power or the energy connected to each chakra, be it the throat for the upper body or the root for the lower body, feet and, and limb, feet and, feet and uh, knees and such. So to, that's the answer. So two, two points. One, this, the power begins in the same spot, Dantian root, and it is transferred through the other chakras, be it the upper body, throat, lower body, root. Uh, uh, yeah, root chakra. So those are the two, those are my two answers for that question. Brother Infinite. Yes. Can you, my own? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you had mentioned earlier about um, grounded and being finding point of balance on the ground. And I just want to um, 
elaborate on the the non-striking part of it for the, the you mentioned grappling with which uh sometime in in a confrontation where you you could find yourself not necessarily but you could find yourself in the point that you tied up and you're not able to deliver effective strikes so you would have to use grappling to get yourself to a point to be able to use freely your hands and knees and mouth or whatever you need to use to get out of the situation afterwards and with that being said you would need point of balance even in grappling on the ground on your back uh that's why a 140 pound 140 pound guy can easily be on his back and deal with a 300 pound man that's on top of him because he has a perfect sense of his perfect sense of body awareness when it comes to his point of balance and, and also the point of balance of the person that he's grappling with. Um, so you being aware of your point of balance while you're on your back or while you're grappling and able to utilize your point of balance against your opponent to put yourself in a position that you don't have to panic and be in fear of being, being trapped uh, to put, put yourself in a better position to be able to free your hands and elbows and knees up to uh, able to get out of that situation. Excellent. Uh, excellent way to pull that out. And as you talked about it, I was uh, imagining, I was envisioning different scenarios. So uh, one thing that is core to our, our training, uh, we realize that when someone else is grabbing you, they are limiting themselves. And so we, we get a really quick sense of how limiting that is and how vulnerable you make yourself when you have the audacity to put your hands and hold somebody or wrap your arms around somebody. Uh, so in the situation that you're on the ground, if somebody's holding you, in many instances, now mind you, I don't, don't, don't stay within a particular box because I don't wanna go out the box, but in many instances, it is, it, to your point, uh, Brother Infinite, having that uh, connection to your own self, that body awareness allows us to be patient because if somebody's just holding you, you know, unless somebody else is stumping your head, they're just holding you. And at some point they must make an advance to put you in a more compromising position. And so being connected to your body awareness, whether that's being mindful of your point of balance, but again, being controlled, connected to your core, connected to the center of self, being self-aware and self-resolved puts you in a position to be patient enough for that individual to make a move and find themselves over their point of balance, allow you to regain your point of balance and make a, a advance, a change in your physical position in order to free up a limb, a hand, or grapple and put them in a, in a, in a, a hold of some sort. That's physical application. Thank you, brother, for that. Anybody else, question, comments, examples of how we can find ourselves over our point of balance in life? Can I veg you back on what uh, Brother Infinite was just talking about with the grappling? Yes, please. And it, and just a prelude, we got 22 minutes, not to rush you, but just oh, to be yeah. aware. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm a, uh, I'm, a ex, I'm a ex-pat from the Long Wind Tribe. I'm going to keep it, keep it brief. Um, I was just, it just really, kind of kind of blew my mind when Inf was talking about, you know, how you um how you how you utilize what you have available to you. And sometimes um, you know, as we know that we are in the cycle of of perfecting, we are consist uh, we're constantly becoming, we're human humans becoming, um uh, that just that just brings me to back to presence and when you're on the ground you on the ground like ain't no ain't no ain't no time to get up on your feet sometimes sometimes you got to deal with it right then and there and that in and of itself is um part of those part of the way that perhaps the universe restricts us in order to elevate our frequency you know we just had you know brothers and sisters um go through green belt and there are times when you're at a low point um in anything in life and in any test you know whether it's in school or 
if you're testing to get a job and you have to take an exam or some type of or a college exam or whatever it is, you know, those tests will have you where you're on your, on, on your back, where you're on your knuckles, you're on the ground. Um, but it's it's in those moments that we have opportunity. Um, you know, the moment the, the moment is pre- pregnant with all possibilities. And it's in those moments when we're on our on the ground, on our backs, uh, where we don't have an, a quote unquote established uh, management of center that we have to find or create one. And that test allows us to realize a higher self. Um, so, you know, just being present to what that is and, and, and recognizing you still in the fight, even when you feel like you're at your lowest. I just thought that was dope the way it kind of exploded there for me. And I, I think the way you I appreciate the way you just snatched that out of my mind exactly at the moment, stay in the fight. You have to stay in the fight on the on your back because many of us have been there before. We have to stay in the fight. And being in that position of being on your back also would it would lend itself to you being us being absolutely more on purpose when we do have both feet on the ground or one foot on the ground. You know, and as you gain in a foothold, you get up off the ground, you got you you get to one knee and you get from one knee to both feet or one foot solid, you know, and we and we we find ourselves back being powerful and harmonized in the space of both feet where you're working. And sometimes you get those highs and you have to go there and you got to make it spontaneous and make it work. And then sometimes you find yourself, you know, flirting with being on the ground or going there because you had to. So that's powerful. All right, we have 19 minutes. We have 30 people online. So I would like to, uh, you know, something less than a minute, but we're not going to press you that way. But by all means, uh, please, uh, let's share. I will uh, start and call names. And if you want to share, please do. Uh, if not, and before we do that, there are any specific questions uh, about point of balance, physically applied, metaphysical examples illustrated. I have a quick question. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll skip my sharing portion. Um, just let it be known that the class was phenomenal today. Um, okay. So my question is, just going back to a point of balance, just the basics as far as our base, because I know that that is the the ground, you know, that's the the point of the point of balance, right? Um, how do we determine as far as like bending of the knees, where is the right place or the specific place where we need to bend in order to have a, a set base? Or is that based on just the person? Like you have to be comfortable with your body physically. Great question. And I, I, I was remiss for not being more clear. Thank you for holding me accountable, Kenny. Um, so physically, point of balance is illustrated either in a set position, which is our, uh, or a horse stance, some may refer to it that way, a static set position where both feet are parallel to one another, approximately shoulder width apart, maybe a bit wider, knees are bent. We also have our left and our right covers, which position us at all times. We wanna stay square so that we have both hands in the fight, equal distance uh, and access to that front foot uh, or rear foot by adjusting that weight 85 to 90% on the supporting leg, be it left or right. Uh, Beyond that, to answer your question, it all comes, all of this always comes back to you. It comes back to I, inside of self. It comes, it is, it is absolutely tied to your, your body makeup, your phenotypical makeup. How does your body construct? Some of us are bow leg. Some of us are, you know, straight legs. Some of us may have what they call knock knees. Some got pigeon feet or slew foot. You know, some of us are tall with, you know, long femurs and some of us are shorter. Some of us have longer torsos and others, shorter torsos and others. Some of us are naturally stocky with dense muscles. Some of us are lean. So, you know, we run the gamut. Some of us are male. Some of us are female. We run the gamut. So some of us are, you know, have been here decades longer than others. Some of us have had physical injuries. Some of us have 
you know, something less than perfect symmetry in our body. Some of us have a slightly slight crook in our back. I mean, all is just a myriad of things. It's an endless possibility of scenarios. So it must be found in self. You must find it within yourself and you must make the adjustments. One word you use that I want to snatch off the table is comfortable. <laughs> we're not going to be comfortable. Like combat is not, you know, we should, we're going to, we find comfort in combat, but combat and, and I don't want to say, I want to be careful. I do not want to say that combat is not comfortable because we can, as we elevate, we find comfort even in combat. But the process of developing power does not come through comfort. Let me say that. Because whether you're developing physical muscle with resistance training, whether you are developing intellectual power through intense study, whether you are developing uh, financial power through trading or uh, your labor, it's not, it's not comfortable. Comfort is not important. It's being, pro, it's being adhered to the process of development that counts. So did that answer your question, Sister Kim? Yes, sir. Um, I, I said com comfort only because, um, I, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know how to explain how I was going with it more so like where we know where to stop and or like what is the right place of where our base should be at that's why I use comfortable okay and to give you comfort back don't take it off the floor give it back to give comfort back is where where are you powerful when you when we stand up straight in combat, you're more easily succumb to losing harmony in your balance. When we bend our knees and decide to be more rooted and more connected, we find more stability and, and greater access to power and are, are less easily influenced by outside energy on yours as it specifically relates to balance in quotation. So you must explore self. You must explore the possibilities within self in order to find where you where you become powerful. Is that better? Yes, sir. That was perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to start in the lower corner. Instructive. Oh, no, I won't start with instructive. Paul, you went. Sister Randy. I hear you, instructor. I'm right here. Peace, family. How are everybody doing? Peace. Um, powerful presentation. Thank you tonight. Uh, we covered a lot of ground. Thank you. Um, so what I wanted to speak on was in reference to the breath and me, myself, not having that energy in, in my strikes and my blows. And that's something that I've been going over. I've been corrected on over and over. And again, it comes from the core and it comes from the breath. I am a smoker. I am still a smoker. And I remember in the beginning, you asked me how long did I plan on smoking? Um, even with the meditation and the breaths, um, I've been working on that, trying to address that. But I also see now, I also see that that is the root of my problem because I'm not accessing that breath I'm not getting that, that power in my core for me to be able to execute the way that I need to. Um, in reference to my peers, when we meditate, um, at times you can hear people's breath and I can inhale, but that exhale, I'm not getting out the way that I feel it needs to come out. So thank you for going over, um, gaining control over the supercomputer and exhaling before inhaling um and pulling it back to the spine because that's going to give me an exercise that i could do um perhaps when i feel the need to smoke uh to help me just strengthen my core and that's something that i will be working on because i need that power for my strikes and my blows so yeah excellent thank you for being so transparent 
and and uh, open, and one of them has to win out, and it's going to it's it's determined by self again. It's all about you. Which one is going to win out? Do you want to hold on to the smoking, or do you want to gain more access to the power? And so now you have again. This is where the discipline is so beautiful because it gives us a, a laboratory. It gives us a place to test the physical and bring the physical and the metaphysical together. And that's what makes this one of the powerful, so powerful for us. So you're at a point now where you can see both sides. You know, in the beginning, you did not see what you see now and being able to have that contrast, you know, the yin and the yang. So now that you have the contrast, you, you will make a decision to do either cut that smoke and gain access to power or ignore greater access to power and hold on to smoking. It's up to you. Thank you, Sister Randy. Love you, appreciate you. I love you too, I understand. Thank you, Instructor Ku. You're welcome. Sister Lovely. Uh, peace, everybody. Uh, peace. It's a, a great class and it's just amazing how everything always draws back to everyday life. And uh, the point of balance, being over it or under it. And, you know, everybody's talking about grappling and being on the ground with the opponent. It made me think about you grappling and you being your own opponent. Mm. You know, you can be your own worst enemy and hold your own self down. And that will take you off your point of balance. Absolutely. So that's what I got. That's a great point. Thank you. Sister Salama. Okay. Going once, going twice. Brother Infinite. Pardon me, I couldn't uh, get my mic freed up. Okay. Um, I just, I think I, mine goes back to uh, what uh, Brother B. Anthony spoke on and um, it really hits home with going beyond, um, going beyond yourself, just being beyond your own capacity. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that's where this really hits home for me. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, and thank, thank you. you. Thank you. This Pretty is a impressive. really good one. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate that. I feel like it feels and pales in comparison to Brother North League, but I appreciate that. Brother <laughs> Empire Knight. Um, first of all, instructor, I want to thank you, man, for putting on a, a fantastic class tonight. Um, you, you don't give yourself enough credit, brother. Uh, you, you did you did a wonderful job. Um, uh, teaching and illustrating point of balance that video uh, that you played at the beginning um, I saw that video several months ago when you first when you first did it but it it hit home once again it's just how important how important our base and and the distribution of weight on the on the rear leg because if you don't if you don't have the right distribution of weight no matter what you do you're not going to move when it's time to move, whether it be to maneuver, which is the first thing you need to do, right? Um, uh, to maneuver and also to put yourself in to be able to use that limb. That limb, I mean, that limb is uh, that um, that forward that forward foot, yes, and that's not even that's not even for is even using picking it up to kick somebody for his foot placement. We we talk a lot about foot placement in the upper class. Um, and foot placement is very important. And, you, and without that, the correct weight distribution, you're not be able to be able to have proper foot placement to put yourself in a position to continue attacking, 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 because that's what we need to do. Once we start, we need to continue to attack. Um, and as far as life is concerned, just listen to, uh, to you and my other brothers and sisters, it's just this metaphysical part of it, even though I know it's supposed to be in the, the four physical but getting to the metaphysical part of it um, about life is always fantastic for me just to, to, to hear, to, to rehear about 
even the point of being a yes man, somebody's you, I think you brought the yeses up, yes to everybody. Yeah. Uh, Brother B. Anthony brought up that's over committing. Yes, sir. You know, and that's go back to you can't say no. Yes, you know, sir. you can't say no, you want to be, and Brother Paul saying try to be a hero to everybody. Yes, sir. And, and even in your own house, you know, you yes, just sir. sometimes you just got to take your cape off and say, <laughs> I, I, I need a day. You know, I, I need a day to be human. You know, yes, you don't think I'm human, but I'm I'm human right yes, now. Sir. You know, yes, in this sir. flesh, yes, I know who I am. But in this flesh, I you know, I experience other things. Yes, uh, so so it was just fan a fantastic class, brother. So I want to bow to you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you, brother. I appreciate you. Yes, man. Thank you so much, Sister Terry. Miss MIA, we won't even get into that today. She uh she on mute. Okay, all right. Brother Issa, nephew. Uh peace to everybody. Um, I feel like I feel like Unc really really hit the nail on the head, but I really dug deep today um during this class and listen specifically to other people's um virtual dojos you know, like how they how they deal with their point of balance in their virtual dojo and just, I don't want to say compare because I wasn't necessarily comparing anything, but just listening um, and, you know, seeing how, seeing what I can pick up, you know, things that are favorable, like, okay, um, see if I recognize things within myself that other people may do that I did and uh, really apply that the things that I heard really apply those changes if need be to my virtual dojo, which will have the best effect, you know, in the physical dojo because it all translates. So um, I'm grateful for, you know, I'm grateful for the touch up and uh, for part one, <laughs> I'm grateful for this call and I'm definitely grateful for everybody's feedback because it make it helps me grow and it makes me look within. So, thank you, instructor, and thank everybody for you know sharing. Appreciate Man, it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. We talked about that on Saturday. This is this is how you take advantage and get that head start on life, man. That many of us at forty, fifty, or beyond being able to look back. If if we could do it all over again in nineteen twenty years old, we would do some things different. So being here, uh, nephew, is huge. And I just love you and I thank you, brother, for being here. And I, I just cannot wait to just watch you continue to uh, unfold, young king. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jay. Thank you too. It'd be something when you get called off mic and you'd be scrambling, looking to get your phone together. You can't get to that. You can't get that unmute. CJ, you there? Okay, we're gonna move on. Sugar, Aaron. Peace, family. Um, I'm trying to get my video on. Okay, so you did a great job today. It was an awesome class. Um, I just keep learning from these classes. And um, I just thought about um, overexerting when um, me personally trying to, well, not trying to, I am <laughs> accomplishing so many goals and um, all the businesses and just in over my head and so knocks me off balance, but also in getting off of the point of balance, it's also lessons to learn in it, to get back on your square and stand up. And so when you get off balance, that's a lesson that you learn from it to repeat it and not to you know get yourself back on balance. So good lesson. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, this was, it's helpful to have a partner to reestablish your balance when you get out of it. So hopefully you can we continue to work to help us help each other get better and, and more, more rooted. So I appreciate you sharing this space. Um, 
Brother Kenyatta. Peace instructor. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm filled again, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always inspired, you know, by, uh, you know, either your teaching, you know, your, your instruction or coaching, or your sharings, you know, it's always, uh, always inspiring, man. So salute, salute, salute. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, for me, um, you know, going back to those foundational, those foundational teachings sort of reminds me of, uh, you know, uh, a chief instructor uh, once upon a time said, you know, we don't hit with our strength, you know, we hit with our knowledge, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, when, when dealing with these, these teachings and, and as you grow as a person, be it on the floor or in life, uh, sometimes the teachings look different, you know, like they're, they're the same teachings, but, you know, you, they, they sort of look a little bit different, you know, as you, uh, as you move along the path of, you know, either your Kempo life or, or life, which is really the same life, but, you know, they start to look a little different. And so, um, so it, it sort of brought me back to, you know, dealing with the formula for power and, uh, you know, employing it on the floor and then, uh, you know, going back to our base and it sort of brought me back to the idea of uh, equilibrium. And it's interesting how like equilibrium, there is no such thing as, um, or, or what we perceive as equilibrium is only temporary. So, so our concept of equilibrium or, or having a base has to be adaptable because life is a eternal uh, change in motion, um, process of changes in motion. And so we can't get comfortable, but we have to get comfortable with changing. Uh, at the same time, you know, just dealing with that yin and yang, uh, you, you have to have a base, but then at the same time, your base looks different when you're in the air. <laughs> you, still, you, you still got a base and, you, and you're not fixed, but you're, you're, you you have a base even in the in a in a process or you know a process of life that's forever changing, and it just speaks to just the um, the dynamics of life and the uh, dynamics of combat. Um, and so uh, so as I as I get the teaching, it just sort of uh, inspires me to um, just remember to um, to to be open. <laughs> You know, just like the creator. I mean, the, the the creator is forever, is forever and eternal. So, so be open so that you can find your opportunity. Uh, you know, be it in, uh, you know, be it on, on the floor, on your feet, or when you're on the ground grappling. Because there's always a way, as long as you're open to the way. So you just have to be open to the way. And that's just a reminder for our meditation as well. It's just a a process of practicing being opening, being open to the way. And, uh, you know, as long as you're open to the way, the way will be shown and, um, and, and you can continue to move on in life, but move in power. And so, uh, so thank you for your teaching. I'm inspired, man. Salute. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Absolute control over center is the key to being powerful, no matter where we are. It starts with itself. Thank you, brother, as usual. Brother Rafa. And mind you, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it is 11.03. Is there any, Brother Rock, before you go, is there anybody that has to get off that would like to share first? Otherwise, I'm, I'm here to the end. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for staying and hanging out. Come on, Brother Rafa. All right. Thank you. Great class. Um, this is beautiful. Um, I don't have much, um, but I did want to um draw on what instructor Vi did ask in the chat about connecting um air he, he asked about connecting air attacks to our understanding or awareness of the chakras um but then after hearing your uh your commentary as well as 
um, Brother Infinite and Brother Pause. I went to the heart chakra and I wanted to just, I'll, I'll put it in our chat because I know we are short on time, but I connected the heart chakra to um, power in the sense of understanding um, or connecting with um, your point of balance, whether you are in the air or on the ground or um, extra most ideal um, sense. Um, you have to have some type of connection to something. Um, that's what drew to my mind. And I think that was most profound in what you all were talking about after that question was asked about um, connecting to our chakras and given that we just been talking about it, I thought that the heart was um, one of the places that you would draw thinking about being in the air, or being on the ground, on your back, that that's the bridge between both being um, lower chakra or upper chakra of the heart. That's all I really have, but I will add, we can add more commentary after in my chat. Excellent. Way to uh, hold accountability. We, we went through an in-depth study on the entire system. So there, in my mind, you're not leapfrogging any one of them. So to, to, to bring energy from the root or the sacral, you must transcend the solar plexus, the heart, and route to the throat and on high. So I want to commend you for that awareness. Absolutely, you have to draw out of the heart. Heart is, is tied to, you know, solar plexus, heart. This is a part of the wheel. This is intention. This is, this is you know, fervor. So, you know, out of the, out of the fullness of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks out of the passion of the heart, the body moves. So you, you, there is no disassociation. Uh, and I, maybe I should have been more clear, but I was uh, speaking to how the throat and the root tied to the limbs of the upper body, arms and hands lower body, legs, and feet. But thank you for bringing us to that uh, awareness of the interplay of the heart. Excellent, brother. Thank you very much. Um, Sister Nishani. Peace, family. Um, I actually really appreciated what Kenyatta had just said about being open. Um, and the moment is pregnant with all possibilities from last week's class and being open to those possibilities and and almost receiving it well instead of fighting it. I definitely reson resonated with the point of balance today. And the whole time I was thinking about what do I do in, uh, in, in class in the dojo and like my roundhouse, really struggling with the roundhouse for after learning it last week. Um, I randomly do it everywhere and I find myself literally falling off every single time. And I got it like once um, and I'm trying to recapture. So I was thinking about all this until you pointed out, well, no, not the dojo, but more a sort in life. And that got me really thinking. I kind of touched on um, codependence, definitely with my family, kind of learning to disconnect and not be so enmeshed, finding my own self and it's not very common in my culture and I know many can relate to it you know feeling that guilt for wanting to do things that are outside of you so kind of choosing me saying yes to me um so I definitely definitely just kept coming to surface every single time you kept repeating it and everybody else was sharing um and I do appreciate how you teach I think there's something unique about every single instructor um and I really appreciate the dynamics that all of you combined bring. So definitely don't compare yourself to anybody else. You're perfect the way it's taught. So thank you very much for taking this time for us. Wow. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Appreciate your share. Uh, yes, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Will you be there tomorrow? Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. Sister Teresa. Good. <laughs> um, thank you. Great instruction. Uh, it's always a lot. <laughs> and it's, it's, I guess it's just because a lot of it is new to me. Um, some of it may not be new. It's just coming to me in a different manner. Um, 
but uh, being able to expound on, you know, some of these words that I've been hearing here and there, like metaphysical and, you know, seeing it in a different, learning it in a different, uh, uh, what's, what's that word? Definition, a different explanation, definition of it. Um, and a point of balance is uh, I'm learning tonight is a lot more than you know I initially believed it to be. So um, that's a new thing that I'll be working into my life. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's that's it. And thank you. You are welcome. As usual, thank you for your presence. Uh, we really appreciate you and your. Uh, commitment. You are consistent and committed. So thank you very much. Uh, Sister Rada. She says she will be mute tonight, instructor. Okay, copy that. Sister Shanika Amina, say something, please. She said the pretty girl sleeping, so she was gonna be oh, quiet. She, she, she always got one. She always got an answer. She just always lay in the cut in silence. Okay, we thank you, love you, appreciate you anyway. Okay, brother uh, Topher. He might you might have the baby too, huh? Okay. CJ, you back with us? I'm back. Okay. Got you. You got a VIP pass for a second shout out. Come on. <laughs> um, it was a really good lesson. So many different aspects of it shared. Um, one thing I love about the art is how it's living and how you always get so much every time something is revisited. Um, something that really hit home for me was Brother Paul was talking about like being in Aquarius and what that meant. And it kind of made me think about uh, being a Pisces, how there's always this pull to not be here, but to be connected <laughs> at the same time. Like, we don't want to be here. Like, let me go. I don't want to be here. Right. Um, but just really finding the balance in that, because at one point you fight against that, like, no, 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 like, that's not okay, that's not right. And you fight so hard against that, and then you don't feel like yourself when you go the complete opposite of that. So really just finding a point of balance in everything in life, like not being too extreme, like going back to the middle way type thing. Um, and then also was just brought up for me is who we are shows up on the floor so <laughs> whenever we're over our point of balance or not we don't have our point of balance in life it usually it's always going to show up on the floor um and so i think that that's an important thing to keep in mind and remember so when we're struggling with those things to address those things in our life so that they can show up in an improved manner when we are there I, I love and appreciate you, my sister, Piscean sister, because you know the plight, right? Um, yes, sir. You brought me present to a number of things. Let's, you know, cognitively replace the word balance to Kenyatta's point at, uh, as to how fleeting balance and equilibrium are. Let's replace that and, and substitute harmony because harmony requires different things and harmony looks different. Sometimes harmony is being quiet. Sometimes harmony is raising your voice. Sometimes harmony is physically putting your hands on somebody. So let's replace balance with harmony because balance is so fleeting and it's something that an instructor uh, Vaughn brought to the surface for us. But thank you very much. Which you, you reminded me of something too, Sister Janelle. Uh, Another thing that leads us off a of point of balance is when we ignore our spirit or we're moved by what we feel like doing or don't feel like doing, laziness, procrastination, but ignoring the spirit is where your gut says something, but then your supercomputer got in the way and analyzed it or gave you a, a substitute answer for what your spirit say do. And it could have been something as small as your spirit said, grab the ink pen on your way downstairs 
your mind, your brain said, well, we're coming right back upstairs. I'm gonna I'm grab the ink pen when I put my shirt on or pants on or whatever. And between you coming downstairs and you know the postman is at the door and used to need you to sign off on something or you see something on commercial and you needed the pen so you could write the phone number down or the, e the website address on a piece of paper right there. Your brain got in the way. Your spirit had intuition, said grab the pen, the supercomputer rationalized it, analyzed it, and had you not bring the pen down or you mess around and leave the house and forgot the pen altogether. So just another example, when we get out of point of balance is when we get disconnected from our spirit first. Um, so side note, uh, thank you, Sister Rada. Okay, um, Sister Kimmy. Hi, hey, um, so wonderful class because um yeah i agree with uh infinite you know you give your you don't give yourself enough credit i really appreciate it uh the the steer into the uh this this subject these subjects these four principles uh the main thing that was coming to me was was making it clear of you know point of balance puts me into the question of um how well am I sitting in my now with breathing and being? Uh, I'll find myself, you know, often in moments, and it be, it's always different moments where you, I'm either overthinking, overeating, over emoting, over rooting myself into things, non rooting things, or non desirable rooting things, or under working. Uh, towards now's priority so like overworking underworking uh towards my goals and stuff that i know i gotta do so and that, that deals with like procrastination or you know just sloth energy but what really came to mind was how it all ties into like nature now and the elements for me you know i was hearing a lot in everybody's uh conversation that it was it's always a different layer it's always a different way you have to apply that harmony but i saw like i categorize it all into like the elements you know elements being water could be how well or how if i'm overly in my emotions or underly in my emotions or you know with thinking i could be overthinking and i need to think less or talking i need to talk and i need to talk less but it brought me to the the to, to see it better to see how to know the over to know the under to know the left to know the right so i can fit in the center um and 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 access that center through you know breathing and being because it's always a, a a number of moments that's going to challenge you and you have to you have to strengthen how well you can chime in with the awareness necessary to maintain the balance. So it was like, you gotta sit still and you gotta know what it feel like. Like, okay, you overthinking, just stop thinking, just surrender to now and stop. So you can, so you can chime in to how to, you know, create the solution from stillness. And um, yeah it, it just it just kind of it really made it clear and plain how i can apply point of balance instead of you know just seeing y'all say that and understanding it on the floor but really being able to organize like that moment in which i alert my senses that i must you know sit still focus on my breathing and gather whatever it is that I need to maintain. And it's always an equation, you know, for everybody. That's why I tagged it to an element. It could be in one category of, you know, how you need to rearrange your expression to create a deeper ease right now. And um, I'm just scanning my notes. Yeah, just, it, it, was, it was plain, it was simple, and it, and it gave me, the tools to be able to to just you know find it better because I, I i see it in those moments where i just need to stop and surrender as deep as i can to now with my breathing and 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 you know having this term point of balance or control the center 
to to know what it is that I'm taking control of and to know how I'm going to establish that by taking control of now uh, and finding the, the right middle for the situation that I am, for the individual that I am and the way that I, I exist in my elements. So, yeah. As usual, you got a, a, a slew of mic drops in there, solution from stillness, under prioritizing now, <laughs> taking control over sloth energy. Yeah, that those are those are great, great phrases and words to uh, to illustrate and allow us that that tools, the tools to work on because cognition is what we take away from information. And that's what's most lasting, how, how it plays out in us, which gives us utility uh, and something to draw from. So thank you for the powerful share, sister. Appreciate you. Thank you for the powerful class. Ashe, thank you for your presence. Uh, sister Adrian, can you talk? Yes, I'm here. Peace, peace. How is peace. everybody tonight? <clears throat> so. Um, wonderful job with tonight's um, session. I have so many takeaways and I just, I started them off. Um, I'll start with things get done through human action. I've worked a lot on that. Um, there is power in no. I've done a lot of overcommitting in the past and I've, I've set some boundaries and gotten better with that. Huge one, um, cut the vices and gain access to the power. Um, and then Sister Lovely spoke on me being my own opponent, excuse me, me be being my own opponent. That's a real thing. And then working through all of those things, um, you find power at the core. So I just kind of got took down through there and read with some, <laughs> con <laughs> some confirmation as well as some, um, some, some, some things that provoke thought for me to sit with. Um, for a little while. So I'm grateful that I was obedient to the spirit and not my computer and tuned in tonight. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence and for your sharing. You just gave me some, some nuggets to chew on. Power and no. Cut the vices. Gain access to power. You find power at the core and own, be your own. Stop being your own worst enemy. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Adrian. Thank you, thank you for your presence. You definitely mm -hmm. added to the space. Much thank appreciation. Uh, Iria. Yeah. Going once, going twice, gone. Oh, oh, hold on. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh boy, you just uh, made it. I got the kids, you know what I mean? Uh, okay. I just wanted to say, like, it was a powerful session, and um, I think what was most helpful for me was just, you know, the the great collaboration with everybody, throwing a different um, perspectives, if you will, uh, on a lot of this. Because initially, when I maybe heard one thing, I just kind of saw it one sided, and um, it's always powerful to be a part of a, a group of people that just are very you know I, i'm in classes all the time usually tuesday is my other class day and it's just like i'm listening to the instructor the whole time and i'm like <sighs> not getting as much out of it you know so this is just super powerful i love the way it's just been um delivered and uh also what i got out of it which it seems like a lot of people did was you know that power of no and you know just um how that can put one um over their center of balance and for me, that's been a, a huge part of my life. Like even right now, I'm juggling kids, and I'm, my, my mind's everywhere right now. Like I'm, I'm pulling, and I gotta learn how to also find that that, that balance for me. Hopefully, y'all can hear me. Peace. Yes, we heard you very well, brother. Um, pulls out another word I had in my notes: that illusion of multitasking being productive. Um, certainly know that I I suffer from uh, a lack of productivity with the multitasking, which goes back to the overcommitting uh, that brother B. Anthony and, and even having, you know, multiple too many businesses going at the same time with what Aaron shared. So definitely, bro, thank you for being here and, and trooping through it, even with the babies on watch and all of that good stuff. That's excellent. Thank you.
uh, Brother Hero. Peace, instructor. Thank you for class this evening. Um, Welcome. Thank you. I, for sure. Um, something that really stood out for me was uh, when you mentioned that procrastination disrupts harmony. And um, that ignoring the spirit disrupts harmony. That really um, rung out for me tonight. And I'm, I'm still chewing on that right there. So thank you um, once again. And um, I, I, I wanted to, like the suffix ion, to go back when you were, were talking about creation and elevation and that suffix, the power in that word, that, that suffix, the in. And I think it also applies to uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. That uh, harmony requires, like that, the action of the ion that that um, and and talking about harmony, being in harmony in the moment. That harmony requires active awareness in the now. It is is something that came to me. Sure. What you want to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I just want that's what, Re just what I wanted that. to share. Har harmony requires what? Harmony requires active awareness in the now. Man, I can't put nothing on that. All I can do is write that down and, and, and chew on that for self when I need it. Well, that, that's what I got from the class this evening. So I just, once again, thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Man, thank Peace, you, man. bro. Awesome. Thank you for your presence and your, your continued uh, commitment, man. Hard work. Look forward to seeing you again, brother. Always welcome. For sure. Brother Marquise Bradley. I just want to say uh, I'm, I'm honored to be able to attend this class. This is a wonderful first class. I observed a lot, a lot, a lot. I wrote down a lot in my notes. And uh, you were, you're a great instructor. So I'm, I'm just thankful. Oh, wow. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I'm thankful for your presence, man. And uh, you just keep showing up, man. You just keep showing up. So I, I, I would imagine I'll see you tomorrow and uh, look forward to you. Thank you for being here. Um, brother Paul, you helped lead the class. Uh, I hope you're okay. And I think we are good. And now I want to call on uh, Instructor Nate. Let's see, I honestly really don't have much to say at all. Everything I was going to say has already been said. I was gonna speak on how life is a fine balance in and of itself, but you know, it's all been said one way or another. So on that note, it's been a great class and I'm just gonna, Remain humble and keep my peace. Well, you, you exude humility all the time, brother. And whenever you contribute, you contribute powerfully. So uh, I thank you for your presence as usual and uh, look forward to you being here for the coming weeks. Um, brother Instructor Ghost, is he still here? No, he is gone. Okay, um, Instructor North Leg. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that's it. Instructor North Leg. Yeah, peace. Uh, just want to say great class. Uh, you did an excellent job. Um, definitely, I know everybody got a lot out of it. And, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest pieces as an instructor is to make sure that the lesson is palatable for all levels. And um, you definitely displayed and demonstrated that tonight. And uh, I know all levels, you know, they're eight. And um, definitely great class. And uh, just salute. Great work. Thank you, Thank you brother. I uh, appreciate it. Definitely uh, inspired by you. And as usual, um, I can't remember exactly how you say it, but uh, it, 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 it connotes the fact that we learn in preparation to teach, which we know that, but today was a is a prime example of me gleaning from that wisdom, uh, just in the test of the day interpersonally, and then presenting it 
absolutely fed me so that I can be better tomorrow at, at staying on my point of balance and being productive and being powerful in life. So thank you, brother, for your example and uh, for your help today on the technical side as usual. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Sir, last and certainly not least, Dr. Andre Class, please talk to us. Hey, y'all, what's going on? Hey, instructor. Uh, brother, brother, a cool man, brother, instructor, a cool man. Uh, you just been dropping it all night. <laughs> I'm very proud of you, man. Uh, you just been doing your thing, man. So uh, again, uh, man, I'm, I'm just humbled to just be on the same team, <laughs> you know. Um, one thing uh, say, uh, and it's been said earlier, but it's, it's worth restating that um, the only thing that is constant is change. Uh, uh, that's the only thing that's constant. And I was reading some, a few days ago said you should have three hobbies mm. that uh, will help you manage change. Mm. You should have a hobby concerning your health, right? Stand in shape, like if I'm obese, I should want to do something about that, you know? <laughs> I should, you know, <laughs> uh, want to do something about it. Uh, uh, way about four, five hundred pounds. I, I should want to get some off me. Should <laughs> uh, there should be a hobby in, involving developing the spirit, mm. um, and there should be a hobby uh, involving sustaining yourself financially. Mm. You should have at least three hobbies that keep everything in perspective. Now, uh, in that change is the only thing that's constant, point of balance is actually false. Uh, it moves and grows as you grow. Uh, someone said that earlier, saying, man, this looks different from, you know, depending on who you're looking at, the lesson of point of balance looks different depending on where that person is. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I was training with, uh, well, you, you know, <clears throat> training in one session with Master Jawad. And we were doing our thing, you know, and uh, well, he was doing his thing because I was usually looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I get that? <laughs> and uh, uh, I was like, and I asked him a question, I was like, you were beyond your point of balance. How did you do that? And I end up on the damn ground, you know? He said, well, it's okay to go beyond your point of balance if you know you're beyond your point of balance. Mm. He said, uh, um, by the time you discovered that I was beyond my point of balance, it was too late. And that's mm. how I got you. Mm. <laughs> I was like, oh. Okay, <laughs> so that's how I ended up on the ground, you know, just realizing it was it was too late. Right. So, you know, um, he said, uh, off times going beyond your point of balance is good for you as long as you know that you are beyond your point of balance because that moves you out of your comfort zone, mm. which causes you to grow, you know. You put yourself in a vulnerable position and you know it, it will cause you to grow because you know, even if you say, yes, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. And you, in the back of your mind, you say, shit, how am I gonna do that? <laughs> but, but it causes you to go within self to say, ah, you know, I have to make my word bond. So uh, in that, I'm going to make my word bond. And I told uh, this person that I'm going to do it. I have to do it. I have to be, you know, I have to show that integrity. And which causes you to grow. 
Uh, so as long as you know that you are beyond your point of balance, it's not always a bad thing. It's a bad thing when you don't know that you're beyond your point of balance. You keep saying, yes, 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 I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. See, that's ego. Mm. Well, damn well, you can't do it. Mm. But your ego say, <laughs> your ego say, you can do that shit. You can mm. do that shit. You keep saying yes, 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 yes. No, damn well, you can't do it. So ego makes you do that. Mm. So there is this harmony that you say yes, right? And you say, I'm going to say yes. And I know I'm going beyond my point of balance. Mm. I know I am. But this is a, 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 a growth moment for me. I'm going to sacrifice spiritually for this because I know it's going to stress me. Mm. I know it's going to tax me. But, you know, I'm going to give it anyway. Mm. Even if I know I ain't got it. Mm. I know I gave that brother my last dime. But you know, I'm going to give it to him because it's going to cause me to grow in another way. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, um, this, again, brother, it's, it, was, it was a beautiful lesson. Uh, a lot of things that I was extrapolating from it, and those are the things that I was pulling from it. And that's why I was, you know, just putting those questions in as to, you know, how do you find point of balance in the air? Mm. How do you find point of balance, not only physically in the air, but in your spirit, spirit being air, you know, uh, how do you find point of balance there, uh, going beyond your point of balance spiritually for overall growth. So, you know, that's, that's what I was vibing from it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep the rest of the night. I'm probably going to be sitting up all night. <laughs> You know, but uh, again, brother, good lesson. I'm glad you guys, um, everybody, you know, had a positive input and everything, you know. I'm talking like it's 12 noon. Um, Jalen over here cooking and shit. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Family. He over here cooking. I, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but time is an illusion. I know, I know. Time is an illusion. He got shit popping over here. I'm okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother and instructor. Appreciate, appreciate your presence, that. man. As usual, you drop some golden nuggets. <laughs> this three hobbies is powerful, man. Staying in shape, spiritual development, and financial sustenance or stability. Those are, that's powerful. That's life changing, bro. Thank you very much. And that, that point of balance is false. Moving beyond it forces you to grow. And like you said, a, a frustration is fertile ground for, for growth and development. Uh, so these, you know, as usual, you gave us some nuggets. I want to shout out Aaron for calling out that it is through these, um, these lessons of being over our point of balance that forces us to grow. So she said that. So with that being said, love you all, appreciate you. Uh, I look forward to us building on this in the chat and in, in, in the space. Uh, and yeah, I'll leave it alone. We'll leave it there. And we look forward to Instructor Northleg uh, getting this up on YouTube so we can, we can revisit it. So love you all, get rest, get meditation in the morning, meditation tonight. And uh, we'll see you all on the floor, whether that's virtually or physically. Peace, brother. We love you, man. Peace. Good night, everybody. Peace, Peace. Peace man. Great class, brother. Peace. 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 See you on the floor. Great all class, right. instructor. Thank you. Good night. Salute. Brother Paul, love you, man. Thank you for always doing what you do, Lieutenant. Love you too, instructor. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Peace.